Hey, Murray, back with another video. I decided to make another video while I'm driving at work to work. Um, I guess it's just because I feel the need to, to kind of talk because I'm rarely in a situation where I can have a conversation. So I just kind of want to talk a little bit. And, you know, um, it's kind of cool when you get a chance to meet some people and, and, and exchange words or just kind of information of what you know. I was very fortunate to be able to talk to a nice guy from England um, a few days ago. Um, he seems like a really nice guy, um, very friendly. We had a very long conversation and it was enjoyable, you know what I mean? Every once in a while it, it's fun to talk to people. Anyway, um, so I, 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 <laughs> I was thinking, you know, um, this morning, because I made a video about um, how I am so angry and feeling violated of the act that my family did and how they um, treated me through the years and the, um, the, um, the way that they had basically set me up to not be able to live a fulfilling life, meaning, you know, they keep you away from people, they, you know, create, con they create all kinds of drama, uh, they, you know, choose your jobs, you know, and then they want you to act according to what they want, what they expect, but they never tell you that they are behind what you're doing. Um, it's their way of being able to spy or, or um, you know, just have something one up on you. And um, this has been going on for years. Never one time did they ever tell me that they were behind my work, ever. Um, but now that I think about it, you know, because sometimes things were said, you know, like at holiday dinners or something that kind of made me think something's weird going on. But, you know, sometimes you, you just don't have time to pay attention. But now that all of this has happened, you go back and you start piecing things together. And, yeah, I do. I feel completely violated. Um, you know, it, 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 it shows that they have no value for what's important to you. They don't even they, they, see because they've been abusing me for so long that um, they don't even think that I have feelings. They don't think that I have any ideas of my own. They just think that I'm somebody who doesn't pay attention. And they, they really have a very low opinion of me, obviously, if they are going to do the things that they did. But um, they don't know me. <laughs> they don't know me. And I think maybe they're starting to realize that they made a big, big mistake. Um, they don't know me. And so um, uh, I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of resentment towards them. And, um, but I don't want to constantly keep talking about them, but I will say, you know, the more that I keep coming, more that keeps coming to my mind, the more I realize how now that they were a part of it and how angry I am. Um, because, you know, I, I never, in my family, my, my mother and my father never made a public announcement at the dinner table or any, any time that I could remember as a kid that laid out these ridiculous stipulations you know what I mean as far as I knew and my mother even said by the time you're 18 you know you can do what you want you're an adult you're an adult okay now how all these people say one thing and do a completely different thing behind your back is just amazing to me you know I would never want to live the life that my family lives I can I see certain things that they do and that's for them but for me I don't want that and it, I just always thought well like a normal person should that that's your personal preference you do what you want and I can do what I want but there's some sort of aggressive behavior behind what they do it's like they feel like they have to control everything you know um, I resent that I resent it big time um, and it, it's not like like I said it's not like it's something new like they just started doing that or that they you know brought up the fact that I lied to my husband that many years ago which I think is so stupid um, they, they bring that issue up, but this has been going on since I can remember. I mean, it, long before w the, what I did to my husband, you know what I mean? So, or what I should say to my husband. So, um, what bothers me is that these people are exhibiting, you know, bullying behaviors, and then you have these employers who want to exploit something that sensitive of a subject. Like, they think it's okay to, you know, bully the person um, that their family is bullying 
and it, it's, it's become a normal process. Um, I posted an article on my Facebook page yesterday about, um, you know, the signs of being a scapegoat or, you know, things that are relatable to um, escape people who have been scapegoated from their families. And yeah, I mean, there's one of them was basically talking about how when the family members start, you know, associating with the, the, the targets or the, the scapegoats, um, you know, entourage or people that they know, you know, the circle of people that they associate with, whether that be through work, their neighbors or whatever, their neighbors start taking on the same view of you as the, the narcissistic family, which basically it sets in motion that their ability to continue the abuse that the family has already laid out. And I can see that this has taken place, um, you know, in some of the places that I've worked, uh, where they feel as though uh, maybe they were thinking about, well, you know, Maria had a kid out of wedlock back in 20 something years ago, and then she lied to the guy that she married that was 20 years ago. So they think about things, and, and believe it or not, things that are petty and stupid are these little things that ignite stuff, which goes to show you that, you know, a lot of people are just waiting and willing to exert their or, or express or become negative um, over anything because they're basically looking for an excuse to um, bully somebody or mistreat them. So, and, you know, I, I, all of it just, it, it's just absolutely shocking to me, you know. Um, I would say being bullied out of work is far more scarier than the days that they used to bully me in school because, um, well, you know, and I'm not trying to underestimate, you know, the, the psychological effects that the kids were going through on the schoolyard being bullied because I will tell you, I was a bully kid and some kids are bullied worse than I was when I was a kid. I mean, I remember this one kid, um, looking back on it, I wish I could go back in time and sometime like comfort that kid because I remember, you know, kids punching on him stuff like that and back him into corners and I think that was probably worse than what I had you know but still on a psychological level it's still bullying you know by you know um, uh, what do you call it mistreating somebody excluding them this sort of stuff it's, it's been going on for a very very long time and their competitive nature you know if I brought a friend had a friend and my sister would be thinking say, say things like well um, I, I, I you know she's my friend now you know, this kind of stuff, you know, and I don't know if they realized it over the years, but now that I'm looking back, I can remember this kind of stuff, and it's obviously, I'm from one of a narcissistic family, you know what I mean? Um, they want to control everything that you do, basically, and it shows it. Um, so anyway, um, but I will say, you know, being bullied at school, only thing is when you are an adult, so when you're a kid, you, you at least live at home, and it's first time some kids who, um, are also bullied at home, you know what I mean? Um, it's still a nightmare because they're getting bullied at work and they're getting, I mean, school and they're getting bullied at home, which was my case when I was a kid. I didn't realize I was really bullied, but it, it is, you know? But I will say when you're an adult and you're being bullied at work, they're holding something over your head. They are basically mistreating you and saying, you know, I can take your means of survival. I'm going to basically bully you out of your job. And I mean, that's that's basically how you look at it. You're like, well, this is how I make my living. I mean, how could you be so goddamn cold? But these people are more than happy to do it. They are like this bloodthirsty, and they're basically the face of your narcissistic family. Just like when I was growing up, you know, the narcissistic sibling is basically the face or the um, the arm and the uh, the working operation um, that's covering the narcissistic parent who is really sitting at the top of the pyramid. But in this case, you know, my sisters, my family, whatever, are working in the same fashion. You know, they are basically being the controllers in this situation. And I, I really do think, because of things like Facebook, like when I was younger, I had, you know, the same kind of treatment from some of the people in my neighborhood because my family would get upset because I would do every, uh, what, what a lot of other kids did, okay? There was no reason for it. It was just I was one of those kids that was just resented from the very get-go. So, um, but, so that kind of transposed onto the kids in the neighborhood and so on and so forth. So when back, like, just like when you're a kid and that shit gets, you know, transposed onto, no, not introduced, okay, into the neighborhood, 
it, it gets introduced into the neighborhood by your narcissistic family. Um, people, you know, pick up on it and they start being, you know, assholes to you. And then the same thing happened when my fa narcissistic family started talking their shit on Facebook. This is what I'm, I'm, I'm coming to realize. And so, just like what they did back then, they are doing now. You know what I mean? It doesn't take much to make people want to kill you. It really doesn't. You know what I mean? So when you mob people out of your job, their job is basically a way of, of, of killing you and then coming back and bringing it and throwing it out into the community. Because what, what kind of chances of survival does a person have after something like that? Seriously. Think about what you do before you do it. That's my biggest issue. Because, you know, this town that I was, I was living in was treating me like I, so I, I did something wrong. Like, I committed treason. I am so serious, okay? Now I would say things have gotten a lot better. But I will say, you know, and I didn't. I didn't do a goddamn thing to anybody in this town. But what gets created, no matter how minor, how silly, how stupid, how frivolous, how pointless it is, it doesn't matter. If it, somebody hears it, they are looking for an excuse, okay? Which tells me that some of these people are just nothing but hypocrites, especially when they got that Christian mask on. You know what I mean? So, yeah. You know, I, I feel like I've dealt with a lot over the last few years. And this has been going on for too long. You know what I mean? Not just counting the time that they sucked up my childhood with this bullshit. You know? And, and I was thinking, you know, um, how... I almost can recall a day in kindergarten. I know this is ridiculous, but I keep thinking, was that the day that she decided to, my sister Lisa, is that the day that she decided that she wanted to somehow be in competition for friendships? Because I remember this day where we were on the playground and my sister was in second grade and I was in kindergarten. <laughs> And it, it's really silly, but still, that I, that was like the first time I remember her and I having a discussion about who we could have as friends and who our friends were. Because my sister came from the, her little, her second grade class, and she was standing over here by my kindergarten class. And I will never forget she was wearing this particular coat that I will never forget. And I remember, um, you know, she had to go, and I and it was time for me to go play. And I remember turning and going over and playing with my friends. And from that point on, I remember that it was a competition in her mind from that day from that day on. Now, to remember something from that long ago, you know what I mean? But I keep thinking this is that, that particular point of my bullying uh, started, I think, on that day. You know what I mean? I have a memory that can go back very far, okay? And I had not about that for a very long time, but for some reason, it, it keeps thinking, I believe that, believe that was the day. Now, my sister may not even remember that day. You know, that, that that took place, you know, when I was out in kindergarten and I was going off with my friends or whatever. Um, she may not even remember that day. But something in her from that time period, you know what I mean, that she needs to understand, something happened. Because I can remember it. And I remember every time I had a friend, it was always, it was some competition. Always, you know. Um, so, I don't know. It, it's just, it's ridiculous, you know. I mean, yeah, I did things that were weird and wrong. And, of course, every kid does something that their parents distinctly told them not to. You know what I mean? Whether that be, don't go out. Whatever. I mean, it's a common kid thing, okay? Most kids do something wrong. And my brothers and sisters did things that were wrong. I mean, my dad was beating my brother's ass, you know, enough times. You know what I mean? So, it was like, I knew that nobody in the family was an angel. So, that just goes to show you how nitpicky that these people are. You are set as a scapegoat. And it, it's, a, it's a very um, interesting article that I had posted on there. And I, I, if, if, you know, you live in Bakersfield or whatever, if you are one of my friends who are a subscriber to me on YouTube and you also are friends with me on Facebook, you can check it out. But um, I, I really appreciated the article because um, it identified so many things that I, I feel are true. You know, it's, it's true. You know, I can relate to it. It's like almost, <laughs> like as if, as if I wrote that article myself. You know what I mean? I, I felt as though that was, it was that good. I, I kind of copied it and pasted it on there because, um, you know, there was a lot of pictures that were, you know, attached to the actual link. So I just went ahead and copied it and modified it a little bit. But it was it was good. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, you know, this, this sort of stuff is wrong. And I, I can't believe how many people are willing to bully somebody um, and mistreat somebody over anything. 
anything. Doesn't, it doesn't have to be anything monumental. It's not even a crime, okay? I didn't even commit a crime. And I got people in this town that, you know, are child molesters and everything else and their son. And uh, they walk out in public and they don't have a problem. You know what I mean? And I'm not trying to, I mean, I'm not trying to bring it up. Because like I said, you know, the town has been a lot, a lot nicer to me. But still, um, I'm just saying, if you could look at this as some sort of social experiment, you will see that, um, you will see that, um, that these things are true and that people's human behavior I mean people can literally turn against you to the point of where they were willing to kill you and harass you to death or you know and mock you as you are doing basically losing everything you have that's the kind of behavior people can have and they do have it okay and it doesn't matter what kind of religion you profess to be along to or anything like that okay this is we're talking about the raw core of human nature people are goddamn evil okay and that's what you need to keep in the back of your mind so when you think about you know gossiping about somebody or spreading rumors I mean, remember that you're putting a situation like this in place no matter how you can shrug it off or whatever all it does is is, is bring on bullying and all kinds of bullshit you know um so anyway i'm going to wrap this video up i'm almost at my destination and I've got some things I gotta take care of today. I'm trying to stay in a positive mood, you know? It's hard because I'll blink up my mind and more thoughts are coming back. Because I don't know if you wanna consider them flashbacks or whatever, or maybe like I said, what I really need is some sort of closure. You know what I mean? Because I know what happened, but at the same time, it's like, you know, no one's ever gonna walk up and say, I did this, I did this to you. No one's ever gonna do that. They won't do it, you know what I mean? Because they know that they would feel very uncomfortable doing this. Um, I, I'm not referring to the cute guy. I'm talking about my family. The bullshit that these people have put in place for years. You know what I mean? Because something is wrong with them. I will tell you, um, you can look at my family and tell something's wrong with them. You can. You can look at them and tell. Okay? If you were going to scoff at me because I'm somebody who likes to be presentable, look at these people. They're not presentable. They don't care about themselves. So what, what they're, the real root of it is is that they're jealous and they're competitive. That's what it is. You know what I mean? Um, it has nothing to do with um, with anything else. It, it's basically just that. And that's all it is. It's just jealousy and competitiveness. And it, it's sad. But, you know, I hate to be that way. Especially because everybody wants to have a family. Believe me, they do. But I don't want people like that in my life. I just don't. You know? And I'm not sad to let them go. I was thinking yesterday, if something was bad to happen to them, I wouldn't care. I really wouldn't. Because you can't take somebody's life for that period, long period of time and and then expect them to um, you basically destroyed so many parts of my life they, they did um, that it, it's unforgivable it, it just is you know anyway wrap it up this video I hope you all have a wonderful day I'll be back with them later have a good day